could do the best hurling. Gal going to win with Joe Rabbit and Eugene Coonan. I think Gal are going to win because they have more livelier forwards and Joe Rabbit's a great fielder of the ball. Gal have good bets with Jerry Cardman, Liam Hodgins and Brian Higgins. Go Galway! That's the view in the West. Hello to Colin Callahan, who's watching in Sydney. That comes from his parents, Mary and Joe, and his brothers and sisters, Philip, Denise and Ruth. We also want to send wishes to Michael Frawley, who is the chairman of the Tipperary Football Board. Uh, he's recovering from an operation, and this is his first time in 40 years to miss an All-Ireland occasion. Now, this isn't Tip or Galway. This is Satanta, and the Fair Bogues will be arriving on the scene fairly shortly. Now, I have about four pages of scripts to tell you what this is all about, but I think it's really a visual show. Just enjoy this and watch it.
Yep, there you have it, as they say, lovely hurling. I tell you, if anybody was passing Croke Park for the last few minutes and wasn't quite aware of what was happening inside the stadium, they'd have been saying to themselves, things have gone fairly rough between Galway and Tip in there. Pete Fitter, you were saying that uh, the, the, the monsters earlier on sounded a little bit like you this morning when you got up. Yeah, I, 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 I felt he was going to get sick up in the corner there. <laughs> As you said yourself, any lad that just came out of the tunnel and he was going to his seat and he looked across, he said, Jesus, I shouldn't have had the last pint last night. <laughs> No, but a, a fantastic show, wasn't it? It was. It was it beat, beat some, somebody very unusual, then. some very unusual characters in Crow Park over the years, but I think that takes the biscuit. <laughs> Johnny Pilkington and Hatcher Mammoth, they came out there at the start. <laughs> Uh, if Johnny Pilkington is watching at home, sorry about that. Johnny, it was only your own county man that said that, we have to point out. OK, that's all great fun and so forth, but 3 o'clock, a half an hour to go to the big match, gentlemen. You know what this feels like being down in the dressing room. You're not worried about the tantrum of the fur bugs at the moment down there. No, this is, this is where you win and lose your All-Ireland final. Uh, at the moment in the dressing room, Galway and Tipperary are totally focused, but in 15 minutes' time, they're going to hit the field. And from 15 minutes until half past three, for the next that 15 minutes, that's where players lose it. Uh, the cosmetic start, you meet the president and you're taking photographs and the crowd are getting on and everything is a great festival, it's an occasion. But the adrenaline that you have built up in the dressing room, bringing the doors with you on the way out, you can lose that. Yeah. And if whichever team can hold it together for those 15 minutes, Tipperary probably have a better chance in the sense of played a Munster final and gone through all this ritual. Uh, Galway haven't done that. When Galway played here, there's only 34,000 people. It was out. Uh, national anthem, game on. Yeah. It's different today. All right, gentlemen, uh, we leave it there for the moment in terms of your thoughts on that. Thank you very much for that. Now, the next event that's going to happen here at Croke Park is the presentation of the Jubilee team. Now, the Jubilee team this year will be that famous Cork team of the mid-70s. Remember, 76, 77 and 78, All-Ireland triumphs all the way. John Collins, John McCarthy, Brendan Collins, Charlie McCarthy, a goal! All such famous names, Charlie McCarthy, Ray Cummins and so many more on that great Cork team of that era. Being introduced to the crowd now by Michal Amurhartey. Of 76, 77 and 78. They beat Wexford in 76 and 77 in Kilkenny in 78. And the Shoko in here, the show, the mark that for the Croke of Yerush. Yes, it's a big, big day for these uh, well, former well, hurlers, well, former well, great well, hurlers, well, because well, this was a great team, winning well, three in a row in for Cork in 1976 to 78. He was some star, a wonderful in full forward. In 77, the honour went to a Glen Rovers man all the way from America to be here today, Martin Doherty. Former star, colleges player as well, with Colosh the Creus Re and Turner's Cross. And of course, Charlie was there as well back in 1966. The fourth won back the All Ireland. In those years, Martin Coleman, whose son was in the goal today for the Park Miners. Keeping the tradition going. He's got a twin brother, by the way. The Absolutely years, Brian identical. Murphy. Based in Kilkenny for quite a long time now. Pat McDonald. Pat, who was a, a wonderful fullback. For the Paddy Barry. And he was also a real star defender, John played at fullback also. Johnny Crowley. Dennis Corlin. Now, of course, is a Gerald captain of Cork Golf Club. Has been Waterford manager. Man of the match back in 1976 against Wexford. The goal scoring half forward Mick Malone. A real tigerish player, Mick Malone. Centre forward Brendan Cummins. Brendan, Ray's brother, of course. At Haven Alloy Bickley, no stranger to Cork Park, Jimmy Barry Murphy. He's won all Ireland medals in hurling and in football. Huge and normally a corner forward whose son was captain of the Cork Miners today, Shawnee O'Leary. All the family will be very pleased indeed. Another goalkeeper with the panel was Michael O'Connor, whose son was full back in the Cork Miner team today. This is Michael O'Connor. Michael, who is based in Glanmire. John Hargan was a regular during those three years, Shoku with John Hargan. 
never seems to age a, a bit. A of note and now to a forward, Eamon O'Donoghue. Eamon relaxed, enjoying his day here. Defender of midfielder, Dennis Burns. He's done a lot of great work after packing and hurling and now coaching. somebody we might see back in Cork Bertie O'Murphy. He's the hot tip, of course, to replace Tom Cashman as Cork coach. And a man that played hurling as well as football, John Allen. And he's been involved in the backroom team of Cork teams in recent Going years. Going on to a young recruit to that team, a defender of no Dermot McCartan. He was one of the most stylish. August led Dermot McCartan, midfielder, halfback, Tom Cashman. He's given great service to Cork. Wonderful player, the Tom Cashman. The mighty Cashman. man himself, Tim Crowley. I always said he was one of the great centre-half forwards he was. Another goalie, Jerry Cronin. Jerry, who played his part as well. And a forward in hurling and football, Kyle the Murphy. Remember his goal in the 83 Munster football final, but he was a hurler as well. A very respected member of that panel was the late Teddy O'Brien, who's represented here today by his wife, Lillian. Remembered. Very, very fun. I was a knee Lillian Pagan, Pat Horgan. Another Glen Rovers man, real stylist, Pat Horgan. Sean Lucy. Sean Lucy, he was a wonderful player. And Donald O'Grady, who is right now at kind to ready on the day of the thing, he faded his best law here. But the last of all, a young fellow at the time who had just won an under-21 All-Ireland medal but destined for senior greatness and captaincy in later years from Middleton, John Fenton. Great captain of Cork. Remember his great goal against Limerick in 87? It simply flew into the net. Left for the Skashki, Korki and Snapleon, the shot to she, shot to shot, and the shot to hook, the Marashi of Cairn. I don't know about you, sir, but I think the uh, Jubilee team gets more youthful every year out here. I wonder what they're eating down there in Cork. All these lads look very well, and like the boys that got over the top now as such, they're, they're putting their efforts back into coaching. And it's great seeing Jim Barry Murphy back there and Tom Cashman and John Finton. Brilliant hurlers. It's tripe, it's crew beans. That's the diet. <laughs> we'll have to get it up the West, John. The great Cork. Jubilee team being honoured here today at Croke Park on All Ireland hurling final day. Champions in 1976, 77, and 78. Absolutely wonderful setting here at Croke Park. About 68,000 people. This is the anticipated attendance this afternoon. And uh, we're looking forward now to the arrival of the two teams, Galway and Tip. Some lovely traditional music as well from time to time here. And as I speak, it just um, does a quick vanishing act. It's a perfect day for hurling. It's... Um, it's a day with a little light breeze which is blowing up towards the canal end. People have expressed reservations about the state of the pitch. It has suffered in recent weeks, and we remember that particular Saturday afternoon here when uh, Tip and Wexford played Cyril, and it took a fair old battering. That's right, Joe. With all the different games here, there's no doubt about it that it's taken a lot of punishment. But like to be fair to the ground staff here in Crow Park, today it looks very dry. Now it's patchy around the place because there was a lot of sand out here last weekend for the football matches. And going back to the breeze, Joe, there is a slight breeze uh, getting a bit stronger, I would think, blown in, unusually blown into the canal end. And it, if you're good to go by the minor game, like Galway oh, we were well on top in the first half and didn't use the breeze that well, missed a lot of scores and cocked to go over the second half. Like and when you are on top of that breeze, you'd want to be scoring. It's the place to be on this particular Sunday. It always is a wonderful occasion. There's been a wonderful build-up to it as well. All the various newspaper writers have done their bit to 
get us really hyped up for it, as they say. And we're looking forward to it. And the throw-in now is about 11 minutes away. Into the Galway dressing room we're going. few words of French being spoken inside there as well. No lane, Mike McNamara and John Connolly encouraging their forces. No, the manager, John the coach, Mike the trainer. They're due out first. Now they've got to come out of there and go down some steps and they've got to remain calm because potentially it is dangerous going down those steps heading out towards the pitch. No lane there in the background. They'll be led out by Liam Hodgins from Abbey Donairy. Jim Bannon there, one of the officials inside there, making sure that everything works to time. Last minute words of encouragement. This is their day, this is their moment. They've beaten Derry, they've beaten the All Ireland champions Kilkenny. Now are they up to the challenge of Tipperary, the monster champions? The fans can now see them. A huge welcome indeed for them. Over the years, I guess, in a way, you could say as a neutral that they've done really well in semi-finals, haven't always been able to put two really good performances back to back. Maybe this is the year. A lot of people think it will be. And here is Kevin Broderick from Abbey Donairy. Kevin today playing in his 15th championship match. Well, the big losers for this Galway team have to be the Gantley brothers, Finbar and Rory, both injured and unavailable for selection. But Greg Kennedy has retained the selector's confidence and starts at right corner back, having been sent off in the semi-final versus Kilkenny. Liam Hodgins captains the team from centre-half back, while it's David Tierney and it is Richie Murray in midfield. Alan Kern sets out in quest of a double All-Ireland medal in the one year. Brother Mark is on the 40, and the 2-1-2-9 man from the semi-final, Eugene Clunan, is chosen at number 14. Mind you, if you think back, he once scored 2-10 against Clare, and that was also in a semi-final replay just two years ago. So this Guinness All-Ireland final set we hope to entertain the fans here, those watching throughout the country and throughout the world as well. It's a high-pressure occasion. I've been down with the players. You ask them, can you enjoy it? And they all say, you must be joking me. Yeah, Joe, like, you have to get out there and get into work and do it straight away. It's a matter of work at this stage. They are the performers. It's a big stage. Now, Galway, like, have done it in the semi-final. And, like, as you said, Gerard, the record books would show that the final isn't in their best. They're coming out. And Conor Gleeson, who is uh, one of the subs this afternoon, was saying to me, if we get a chance at all, Brian O'Mara and John Lackey will be in our team form. It's a hugely emotional occasion. It's the stage that every hurler in the country who's ever taken a on into his hand wants to be part of. Declan Ryan here, hugely influential and a great leader of the attack. And he's in there at full forward, playing in his 39th championship match this afternoon. So they go for the photograph. And the extended panel will get in there. Now, I wonder will we catch a glimpse of Brian O'Mara and John Lahey. John is definitely part of the panel. And they are bringing Brian O'Mara across. He's been brought over by the selectors. There he is. Well, no, that's, uh, that's another player. And Brian Amara is coming across now. He's a little reluctant, I think, to join the party here. And Lahi and Omara are both getting into the frame. What an awful shame they can't play. Well, that's the main picture. I think the uh, players just want to get going and get on with it. Being encouraged back by some of the more experienced heads in the Stipperary team. We mentioned Declan Ryan already. 
holder of two All-Ireland medals back in 89 and 91. He's a cousin of Tim Horan, by the way, of Australia, the great rugby player. And this is the Tipperary team this afternoon, minus Brian O'Mara, minus John Lahey, but should there be a replay in six, seven days' time, as it's scheduled, O'Mara could be back. Brendan Cummins is fronted by Philip Marr, with David Kennedy in the pivotal road of centre-half back, behind the midfield duo of Tommy Dunn and Eddie Enright. John Carroll continues on the 40. Owen Kelly is listed to his left, with Eugene O'Neill, the real beneficiary following O'Mara's suspension. Mind you, one or two others might have been looking over their shoulders had the Molina home man not been given a straight red card against Wexford. Nicky English, third year in charge, huge occasion for him here and his fellow selectors who of course are Ken Hogan and Jack Bergen. Now, Cyril, there's been a suggestion that from the outset, or maybe not from the outset, from very early on, Lark Corbett could go to left half forward with Owen Kelly going in to the corner. And here is No Lane. He's done a smashing job bringing Galway through to the final in his very first year in charge. Pat O'Connor is the referee for Mahan in County Limerick, of course. As we say, a breeze that is blowing up the field from left to right. Yeah, Jerry, what you were saying there, there is in, in the training in Turles, it was very nice, but Derek Roberts was training most of the time at wing forward since the semi-final, since Brian O'Mara was in Jaffa, and Owen Kelly was inside. Now, Owen Kelly has played under 21, all his hurling outside wing forward, he's very neatly around the square, and it could be possible that he could start in there on Ali Cannon and young Carver can out wing forward. Time will tell, but I think up in the Galway end as well, I expect Joe Rabbit will probably start corner forward, and uh, Alan Kearns will probably go wing forward where he can kind of use his athleticism. Well, that's an indication of the strength of the breeze this afternoon. It's uh, going to be influential, but we'll see just how influential once things get underway. Final thoughts from our panel then. Michael Dignan, who's going to win this All-Ireland Final? Um, at the beginning of the year I went for Tipperary and I'm going to stick with them. Um, I get some stick from my father and my uncle who played for Galway, but uh, I, I think they've played in more hard, tight matches. Um, their half-back line have been very dominant all year. Joe Rabbit caused a lot of trouble for David Kennedy last year when he moved out to them. And if they can disrupt their half-back line, God will have a great chance. But I fancy Tip uh, in a tight game, which I think it will be, and point or two to Tipperary in the end. The Finnerty, we know who you want to win, but can they do it? They can do it, yes. Um, the big question is, have they kept their feet in the ground? Are they as mentally focused as they were against Kilkenny? They had eight months to prepare for the Kilkenny game, they had only three weeks to prepare for this. But talking to them during the week, they seem to be very, very focused. They realise they only have won one game. Uh, it's Tipperary, they don't fear them in an All-Ireland Final because they've played them so often at underage down the long. Now, you have to respect Tipperary in All-Ireland Final as well. You have to respect Cork in, in, in the minors. They're good hurlers, they're capable of performing. They've been knocking on the door for the last four or five years. It's really the team that will totally focus on this, get into the game early and take the opportunities because if your look goes against you, as Michael will tell you in an All-Ireland final, you can try as hard as you like, you can be even a better team than them, but if the balls don't break for you, it won't happen. I heard that when the team got back after that famous win over Kilkenny a couple of weeks ago, down at Athlone Ride, the next training session, Mike Mack gave them a bit of a scolding. He did, um, Mack has, has been very worried that it will get to their head, just one victory, and, and that they think they're heroes. And they've been told they've been heroes, and we're talking about the greatest team since the last one that won in All-Ireland, but they haven't won All-Ireland. They will be the greatest team tonight if, if they have won it. Now, Mac has been there with Clare recently. Lane has been there in the past. He has four or five All-Ireland runner-up medals. He doesn't want any more of them. John Connolly is very experienced. They look very focused coming out. They don't look overhyped. But again, as I said, it'll happen or it won't happen on the day. We'll know after, at half-time how well we're playing, that they're either in the game or they're not at that stage. Well, wherever you're watching this particular match, either at home or in uh, places far overseas, we hope that you are enjoying this. Uh, I know they're watching down at the Merlin Bar in Galway at the moment, having a great occasion there. I want to say hello to John Egan, celebrating the big 5-0, I think, John, this particular weekend. I hope you enjoyed the match. One final thought, Michael Dagnan, before the teams meet the president. Will this be a physical game? A lot of people expect that it might be. Um, I'm not so sure it will be. I think that the animosity maybe that was there uh, in Pete's time and... and <laughs> it was probably caused by Pete. <laughs> well, no, well, he was involved in a couple of it. He wouldn't stand back in it, that's for sure. But uh, um, no, there was a bit of bad blood there with the Keedy affair and all that type of thing. Yes. But I think that's gone. There are two new teams, basically. Declan Ryan and Joe Rabbit have been the two exceptions. But uh, you'd expect um, tough enough, but not, not over physical. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. And so then the President of Ireland, Barry McAleese, has been escorted out by the President of the GEA, Sean McCaig, to meet the teams.
must be the Artane Boys Band. It's now the Artane Boys Band plus one lovely young woman. And Marie Sheridan has joined the core of the musicians. And now it's the turn of President Mary McAleese, along with Sean McKay, GEA President, to come and first of all meet the hurlers from Galway. And she goes towards Alan Kearns. Will he be a history maker this year? Replicate what Teddy McCarthy did back in 1990. It's been a big weekend sport here at Croke Park. Michael Duxley Walsh of Kilkenny, for instance, he created another record last night when he won the high ball All Ireland, sixth of our 30 senior softball singles. This is handball. That's for the 16th time in 17 years. Congratulations to him. Liam Hodgins doing the introductions. Pat O'Connor here, who is the referee, introducing his team of officials as well. His regular team of umpires, Seamus Walsh, John Mulcair, Tom Blake and John Flavin. started out the year as the all-star right half back. Ends it playing on the 40. There hasn't been a draw, of course. We've mentioned this a few times today, but there has been speculation. There hasn't been a draw since 1959. It's all building up here. Huge crowd, perfect atmosphere. Should be a great game. Let us hope so. We've got our fingers crossed, and we'll be back very, very shortly. Galway and Tipperary to enjoy and hopefully to savour the occasion. There's so much pressure on these players, Cyril. Everybody's going out there wanting to do their best. They've trained as hard as they possibly can, yet we know, barring that eventuality of a, a replay, one team is going to be very, very disappointed. That's true, Ger, and you'll find that the team that's going to win the Ireland is the one that's had to handle the pressure more like most, because it, it'll be all very physically fit, but a lot of it is mental at this stage, that you go out, and even though it's a very, very important game, the most important... Well, we thought we had a toss, but there was no indications by the players signalling this way or that, so we'll just have to wait and see. ...counties in recent years, great minor teams, great under-21 teams as well. This is the realisation, and it's been a long time coming for counties like Galway and Tipperary. You know, 91 Tipperary, you've got to go back to 88, you were about in those days. That's right, Sharon, sure. you wouldn't think there's going to be as long a game again, that you'd contest and win an All-Ireland final, but both of the teams have been in it, but not winning them, and no one wants to be on the losing side of such, and that's the sad side of sport, but that's part of it. Uh, Tipper together, I suppose, this is Nicky's third year in charge, like this terrible pressure down there in Torres, they won't hear of defeat, but they have to deliver as such, whereas Nolan and his, his I mean, John Condy and Mike Mack, they're just together this year, they inherited a lot of these guys, a lot of them coming through from underage teams, and uh, they wouldn't be as long as on the road as a tip, you know, there'll be pressure on them as such, but I don't feel they're, in, they're under much pressure as Tipper. Well, when I look through the Tipperary team, I think it's still a very young team. Okay, Declan Ryan's been about since 1988. He played uh, in that particular championship, has medals, as we know, from 89 and 91. But overall, it's still a very youthful Tipperary team. Yeah, both, both the teams are very much the same, really. Like, you have Joe Rabbit, I suppose, there, the statesman on the Galway side, and you have Declan Ryan on the tip side. And after that, it's all fellas that have won minor and under one championships, and say, national leagues and club all Irelands. Uh, but this is the one that they really want to win like and uh, you know if you win this like in either county you're a hero for life you mentioned uh, Joe Rabbit do you anticipate that he play in the corner like he did in the semi I think he will yeah I think the left turns out going forward let him do a lot of running early on and Joe will be very strong around the edge of the square and he takes a lot of pressure off other fellas holds up the ball and lays it off and he's a big man Joe Rabbit, in there let's just enjoy the atmosphere here it's magnificent
Tipperary have uh, obviously decided, or it has been decided for them, that they will play with the breeze in the opening half, and they will play from left to right. Galway, as you can see, have gone into a huddle. Nobody going into any positions. Tipperary players stretching themselves out along the line of the field. There you've got Eamon Corcoran, David Kennedy, and Paul Kelly. Will the title go down to the south? Will it go west? Tipperary, All-Ireland champions on 24 occasions between 1887 and 1991. Galway with four titles. The counties met at the very, very first ever All-Ireland final in Burr in August 1887. You were there, sir. Was that a good match? <laughs> sure, I hope this one is, I hope you know that, that the result's a bit better than this one. <laughs> but sure, you'll find sure, that whoever makes the good start here in the first 10 or 15 minutes, if someone can sneak a few pints over the bar and get a good start, it's more than half the battle because there will be a terrible lot of nerves and you'll find as well that the ref, Pat O'Connor, will be very strict early on. He won't want any lesson early on. So well, the both teams want to concentrate on the ball and get to the ball first and use the ball. The intro music is over. It's time for the national anthem, which will be sung for us today by Des Willoughby. showtime it'll be the 22nd championship match between Tipperary and Galway and Owen Kelly has switched across with uh, Eugene O'Neill and Lar Corbett as anticipated let's see how it goes we're looking for a good one Pat O'Connor is in charge they're ready to go in midfield Tommy Donnan at the end right against David Tierney and Richie Murray. And straight away here is Owen Kelly. Out over the sideline, he carried it over. Line ball. They're going to leave this one for Ollie Canning. Ollie was a real star in the win over Kilkenny in the semi final. Great connection. Down towards Fergal Healy. David Kennedy going back. Great catch in the air there by Richie Murray. Just straight out of the minor ranks for Galway. Up onto the stick, beautifully balanced by Paul Kelly. Towards Declan Ryan. Can't reach up for it. Strong defence. It's fast, it's furious early on. You'd expect nothing more. Richie Murray couldn't take that pass. Instead, it comes back there towards La Corbett, and he has put it wide. La Corbett, one of two Thurlis Sarsfield players playing in today's final. The club of the great Jimmy Doyle, of course. Now, can Galway win their own puck out? This is Michael Crimmins. Hitting it down this time towards Alan Kearns forward there by David Tierney bit of a scramble for it Fergal Healy trying to get the ball out and it comes towards Alan Kearns and he has struck it and he has put it wide a little disagreement there straight away with Paul Ormond Alan Kearns felt he might have scored there 
Ferns has gone out to right half forward as anticipated and it's Rabbit who's in in the corner and this is the miss. Brendan Cummins puck out. Caught well by John Carroll. Bumps off Richie Murray. Dropping short however. And it's Crimmins who takes it away for Galway. One well. Kearns trying to get it forward. It's going to be interesting to see how the two Kearns brothers perform this afternoon. That's Tommy Dunn. That's a huge one from Dunn, and that's going over the bar. Tip Leach. He really is a wonderful, stylish hurler. And he's got the first of the day here. It's an excellent score by Tommy Dunn. He went into this match having scored six points for the season so far. He's got another. Taken down by Kelly. Corbett can't take it. Back to Paul Kelly it comes once again. Sun coming out here. Referee spotted a foul inside. It's a free from about 40 metres out. The foul is by Michael Healy. Healy will have quite a battle this afternoon in his hands up against the wily Declan Ryan. Yeah, Joe, Declan will keep coming in front and try to hold him off the ball. Tip made a nice start from Tommy Dunn. Beautiful risk score, so Jim, this should be another point here for Owen Kelly. 23 points so far for the season for Owen Kelly. This is well within his range, more or less straight in front of goal, and he pops it over the bar. A very good start by the team for Munster. 2-0. Well, the cloud overhead has broken apart and it's now a very, very blue sky we can see and it's lots and lots of sunshine everywhere. In towards David Kennedy. Mark Kearns is there. Can he get the better of Kennedy this afternoon? That could be a key duel. Ollie Canning taking it up. Whipping it away there from the attention of Owen Kelly. It'll be a line ball. Eamon Corcoran preparing to take this one. Very much their long-range free taker. Today playing in his 11th championship match. Not a good one. Straight to Broderick. Inside towards Eugene Clunan. Will he be the star of the day as he has been so often in the past? And he has put this one wide. They're protesting. It's two wides now by Galway players. Alan Kearns and Eugene Clunan. And he felt that he did well here, I'm sure, to get out ahead of his man, who is Philip Marr, and there won't have been too much in that. Ormond is under it, but so too Rabbit. Eugene Clunan trying to come out to take it. Here's Eugene Clunan. Well, he was trying to link up with somebody. Kevin Broderick is still about him there to try and make it. A Galway attack. Doesn't work out, however. Eamon Corcoran was trying to get it away for Tipperary, but they're still under pressure. Dished ahead by Mark Kearns. And going down there was Eugene Clunan. That'll be a free in. Chances are he'll take it himself. It was all a little unclear and uncertain there. But eventually, Tipperary invited into committing the foul. Clunan with a magnificent tally of 8 goals and 56 points in his career in championship hurling. Oh, he's gone low this time. Joe Rabbit taking the knocks, turning around and putting it over. Good point by Joe Rabbit. Yeah, it Joe. was a miss hit free, really. He showed great awareness because the free was miss hit, but Joe was short his strength, cut it up and put on two, took on two players, such so as two tip players here. He goes down it, holds them off, takes a rep and over on his right hand side, just makes it over the bar. Goldwell fans will be hoping he has a really good day in Croke Park right now. They're working to get this ball away through the captain Liam Hodgins. So good at shoring up the middle of that goal with defence. Down towards Joe Rabbit once again. Paul Orman's over there as well for Tipperary. Here comes Philip Marr. Broken down once more. Derek Hardiman having his work cut out here, trying to deny Lar Corbett. Down it goes for Mark O'Leary. They work it through with Mark Carroll, with uh, John Carroll, rather. And here's Ollie Canning once again. 
He'll play anywhere. Very accomplished player, very versatile as well. Scooped ahead this time by Alan Kearns. And it ends out over the sideline. And the linesman says that's a Galway ball. Early stages, but it's settling down nicely. Yeah, Joe, both teams have settled down now. It's very noticeable with it. Adi Cairn is going across, right across the full back line. To him from his left, his own side, and on the right side. Brendan Cummins is ready, in case it comes his way. It'll be Richie Murray from St. Thomas's to hit this. Corcoran coming out to try and meet it. Rabbits there as well. Played away by Paul Kelly. Tierney scooping it back. Again it goes to Hodgins, partially blocked down. Rabbit coming out to grab it. Into the space. Philip uh, David Kennedy is there. Plenty of space here. Here's Mark O'Leary. Good delivery of the ball inside. Goes beyond Declan Ryan. Everybody in after it. Back towards Declan Ryan again. Stopped the first time. Still possibilities here. Here's Owen Kelly. And Kelly has put it wide. It's a good chance. And he seems to have a facial injury. Could be a blood injury. They're also bringing in a replacement uh, stick for him, but this was his shot. That's where it ended up. He still has an injury. Thankfully wearing the uh, face guard there. Young player, of course, came through the St. Kieran's College Nursery in Kilkenny. And he was on the uh, Tipperary senior team as young as 18 years of age. Yeah, he's only 19 now. Very good player, Jerry. Like he could play him anywhere, such lovely touches. He'll feel, he'll feel disappointed he didn't score that because he sold the dummy but onto his good right hand side. He has good, two good sides, but like onto his favourite one and just put it wide. Jerry O'Sullivan, the doctor is out to attend to him. Nobody taking any chances. A fine young talent. Michael Crimmins from Athen Rye. Great club side. Kennedy batting it out, one in the middle of the field, Tommy Dunn, outside towards Corcoran. Belting it down towards Declan Ryan. Owen oh, Kelly was trying to nip inside, hoping he might pop it from a, a little knock-on. Has it instead. Back once again. Oh, that was Tierney coming in, doing the blocking. It's ferocious, it's tough, and it's very intense. Out to Broderick, score on that wonder point against Kilkenny. Paul Kelly playing it back. Drop down here. Lark Orbit. Well, that's a real hit and hold one into space. Nobody able to benefit from that. He didn't have the strength to quite carry the distance. Crimmins back downfield again. One-handed down there by Mark Kearns. Alan Kearns is over there as well. And they drive it away out of defence. John Carroll trying to come through. Eugene O'Neill as well. Always a constant threat to uh, any opposing defence. Here's Ali Canning. Tripped free out. 45 metres from the Galway goal. 2 1. Yeah, at the moment, Joe, like the tips, Minters will be kind of, they won't be satisfied with their full forward line. They're lying about 35 yards out from goals. A lot of bargaining into Crimson on his own, and callbacks are starting to get on top. It's going to be Cahill Moore who will take this. Former centre-back, former centre-half forward. They wait for the breaks inside. And the ball comes out there in the end towards Eddie Enright. Had a very good first half in the uh, semi-final. Nicely picked up here. Hodgins. It's a good solo effort by Liam Hodgins, but not a good final shot. Should have scored and he knows it. Pressure once again on the Galway backs. Greg Kennedy in there, he's the number two. Lark Corbett, number 15, and the referee is going to throw the ball in. Yeah, Joe's very fast puck out there because when he comes realise there's no centre back. And once again, Declan Ryan has been fouled, and it's a free in. Well, Michael Healy is having his problems against Declan Ryan. He's a big fellow, Declan Ryan, very 
experienced campaigner. A free taken by Owen Kelly, and it's a second pointed free. To Ferrari lead by three points to one. Michael Crimmins against a breeze here, which is not particularly strong at this stage at all. Galway trying to mount another attack. A decent chance presenting itself, and that was uh, Richie Murray, uh, but he's put it wide. That's four wides now by Galway. Score of a very, very spectacular point in the uh, semi-final match. The chances are presenting themselves to Galway, which is interesting at this early stage. They're trying to take a firm command of the game. Might have had a point there. Tip still the leaders. Here's Cottle Moore. Lobbed in there. Mark Kearns. Inside towards Joe Rabbit. Kevin Broderick next, but it's uh, Eamon Corcoran who comes out. Fergal Healy now picked off the ground. Free to Tipperary. Let's have a look at this again here. It was Fergal Healy, the player involved, a player from Crockwell. Brendan Cummins. Oh, it's a huge one. Way in there. John Carroll's about so too. Declan Ryan. Back it comes once again. Lap forward. Great block down there. Galway trying to get it away. Anywhere will do. Still pressure, however. Tommy Dunn. Declan Ryan trying to scoop it up under the stick. David Tierney is about with a white helmet. And the referee in the end decides that it's going to be a free. And that is uh, Owen Kelly who's down there injured. And uh, the man being spoken to is David Tierney. Yeah, John, at this stage, like the go with defence midfielders are committing, committing a lot of uh, frees. Like, and most of these are going to be punished. Tierney has his uh, number noted by the referee. Gets a little ticking off for all of that. This is what happened. Tierney coming across here. Foul committed on the number 12, who is Owen Kelly. Ready to take the free himself. That is inside the right-hand post, and it's over the bar. It's a third point from a free by Owen Kelly. Very That's good three from three. Very good score, Joe, because that was a hard angle as such, and they're, they're making, they're, they're punishing goal for the indiscretions. Well, Galway have had chances, but they've only had one point to show for it so far. Mark Kearns in there with Kennedy, breaking it on there towards Alan Kearns. And passed outside towards Broderick, it runs away from him. Tommy Dunn picks it up. Runs into a block, still going forward. Hand pass to head to John Carroll. Into space. Well taken in the end, however, by Michael Healy, outside towards Ollie Canning. Down to the left half corner position. And it's gone out of play. And the linesman has waved his flag, and the flag has gone one way. And thankfully he has the stick still in his hand. The crowd laughing at this stage. Just watch this again. Linesman puts up his uh, flag and off it goes. A little white flag has been reunited with a stick. <laughs> Tomas Costello about to take this one. Good connection. John Carroll. His job basically to keep the ball moving inside, break up the play where necessary. David Tierney trying to dominate at midfield. All the way in there, pressure. Brendan Cummins coming out, assisting his fullback, Philip Marr. Almost on his hands and knees when he made the clearance. Out as far as Richie Murray, midfielder for Galway. Fed back in there, it's two against two. Brendan Cummins has come out. Tom Costell trying to scoop it away. Healy trying to get it up. And in the end, it's Philip Marr. Good clearance by the tip fullback. That was dangerous. Cahill Moore here, winning it back at left half back. Referee says play away. It comes towards Kevin Broderick. 
getting away from Corcoran. Broderick again going on a typical solo run on his left-hand side. Stopped again this time. Runs on towards Mark Kearns. Go away there in numbers. Opportunities. And that has gone over the bar. Well, it's Eugene Clunan who's got his first point of this match. It's one Galway have needed to narrow the gap somewhat, eat into Tipperary's lead, but it's early stages in the match. Well, he's a prodigious talent if you give him enough decent ball inside, and Philip Maher is aware of the task that lies ahead of him. This is broken down by Lark Corbett. Hand pass to space. Tommy Dunn striking, he's a great striker, he's a great hitter of the ball. Tommy Dunn has got a second. Two shots at the target now and he makes it five points to two. Great work here by Lark Corbett, into space, took a knock, out as far as the support player who was the captain, Tommy Dunn. At the moment, Joe, there's a turbo song, a strong son going in on the tip backs and Brendan Cummins and goals, very, very strong. Or familiar faces there in the crowd. TJ Marr, we just saw a moment ago, saw Pat Fox over there as well. Now we're looking at Tip trying to launch another attack. This is cut out here by Ollie Canning. Away off his left hand side, down towards Alan Kearns, trying to steal inside Paul Orman's cover. Kearns been told to give it in. On a solo burst himself. Knocking it back, but only straight as far as Eamon Corcoran, and Corcoran completes the clearance. Still 5-2. Galway, Richie Murray. Big ball downfield towards Joe Rabbit. Always a threat, Rabbit. Kennedy coming across. Still Rabbit, but kept out there into the corner by David Kennedy's vigilance. Good hurling. Back towards Kearns. They're having to work very hard for the scoring opportunity. And it doesn't come their way in the end, but it might just yet with Fergal Healy dispossessing Costello. Healy firing it in, and he has put it wide. Tips seem to be getting their scores easier. Yeah, Jerry, at the moment they are like, but it's a good feeling coming from freeze, and they would have a nice breeze. Go, we are still in the game because they are getting chances but not taking them. And as I said before, Jared, there is, if the ball drops in around the square, there's a terrible sun in there at the moment. It seems to come out from under the clouds for a while and goes back again. Brendan Cummins today playing in his 23rd championship match in his sixth championship season. David Tierney, Kevin Broderick trying to get it back. Galway doing well here to pick up this Tipperary puck out. Here comes Broderick again, but aware he was going to be hooped, they were chasing after him, Corbett was getting back there. Here's Fergal Healy. Towards Alan Kearns. Across out there to meet him is Paul Kelly. Kearns does well, gets the shot in, but he's put it wide. Six wides now. Jared, they are bad misses, because at the moment, like, he sold a lovely dummy, and Galway would need him, like, if... Like Tip can still go up and score and other in, like three points in it, but like there should be only about one at this stage for Galway's sake. Still only a goal between the teams. Cummins launching another one. Cottle Moore lets it bounce from his hands. It comes down towards Owen Kelly. The youngster playing it out into space there, but won back well by Galway. Cottle Moore trying to get it away. Referee says play away once more. It comes to Broderick. Kevin Broderick in towards Joe Rabbit. Great catch. Rabbit's away. Still a second chance of getting a scoring opportunity. He holds on too long, and it's a free out for Tipperary. He just stumbled, but you've got to credit the good defence of Tipperary as well for closing out his space. Effectively, they were smothering him on about 20 metres or so out from goal. That's right, there was two or four on, but if there was, there had to be some going in loose. He should have just let it out into space. At the moment, like the ball we have back there, are right in the game and driving a lot of ball up. Not much going into the tip full forward line, but when it goes on there, it's very dangerous. Well, the goal we have back line were excellent, of course, also in the semi-final match against Kilkenny. Oh, that's gone all the way in. Chances here, first chance. Taken with him, Mark O'Reilly.
It's a goal in five points to two points. Mark O'Leary comes in. It's virtually his first touch of a match, and he crashes it back past goalkeeper Michael Crimmins. Yeah, but it's a great ball job by Declan Ryan. He got out in front, gave a beautiful hand pass. Hold was through it, and it was a great shot. So a goal after 22 minutes. Well, that was the first opportunity that Mark O'Leary has been given in this match. It shows how dangerous he is, but look at Declan Ryan playing the leader's role, and it's walloped to the net by O'Leary. Yeah, it was really Declan, it was a fantastic score, and he took it very well, and gave Kremlin's no chance in goal, but like, just Declan Ryan again, use his old experience, go out to the ball in front, just held it for a fraction, and give a lovely hand pass. Free to Galway. Eugene Clunan. He doesn't miss too many. He's put this one over, and it's his second point of the match. Galway needing everything at this stage. They're going through a very rocky spell. Eugene 2 11. Well, he's got 2 9, he's got 2 10. Who knows what will he do for No Lane's team this afternoon? Brendan Cummins driving it up once again. This time into Owen Kelly. Kelly lightning fast, razor sharp, brilliantly accurate. He's got four points. He won't see anything better than Thatcher. He was out to that ball. You heard the puck out. It's coming low trajectory on it out in front. Hard enough to beat Ollie Cannon as such. Got it on the turn. Just catches it out of the sky. Turns around on his left. Has a little squeak here before he takes the shot. And the minute he hits it, your feet has gone over the bar. Fantastic score. They've been talking about his talent in Tipperary for quite a long time. He's delivering. Now it's up to Galway to try and do something about this scoreline of 1-6 to 3 points. Here's a chance, Fergal Healy, he's got a man outside. Kearns coming into it, saved by Cummins, belted in by Clemen. It's a goal for Galway. Eugene Clemen a goal and two points. 24 minutes gone. Just two minutes between goals and it's 1-6 to 1-3 and we could be in for a cracker. Ball well, we needed that, a great shot and a great saver. Came out to Clunan, he won't miss him. Lovely ball by Fergal Healy across the Kearns who thought he had it saved. Cummins made a great save and Cummins and uh, Clunan won't miss him once. The entire full forward line was involved in the build-up and here come Tip once again, denied. Well, you know... That could have been the save of the season, point-blank range, great save by Brendan Cummins, but Clunan dispatched it. He's got some record. That is his ninth goal in Championship Hurling. He's some player. Yeah, and Galway needed that because they were going six or seven down. They need back in the game now and they're playing against the Breeze and they'll feel happy enough. It's going to be a 65. Tommy Dunn getting ready to take this one. Looks composed, strikes it well, and he puts it over the bar. It's his third point of the match. Just keeping Tipperary those couple of points ahead. They lead by four. Crimmins with his puck out, targeting the right half forward position, down towards Rabbit. It used to be an old ploy. Rabbit still in there in the thick of the action. Here comes the wing-back, Derek Hardyman. He's missed it. Comes, of course, from uh, Pete Finnerty's club, Mulya. Well, the fans here have the benefit of watching the match as well up on the big screen. That gentleman there in picture moments ago was looking at himself. Here's John Carroll. Plenty to look at in his play. On his left-hand side, he drives it brilliantly over the bar. That's a great score by the man from Ross Cray. A goal in each of his last two games. He's made it 1-8 to 1-3. This was great play here by John Carroll. A lot of outstanding individual performances in the match. This breaks loose. Tierney inside towards Fergal Healy. Knew he was going to get away from him. Scooped outside there towards Mark Kearns by Broderick, but it comes back once again. Felt it to midfield by Eddie Enright, brother, in towards the goal-way goal. Still they go forward, but the referee has blown his whistle. They play away. 
That wouldn't have counted. Owen Kelly was looking for his first goal of the game. Referee saw the foul, and it's going to be a free in. And again, it's Michael Healy fouling John Ryan. That's the third time that has happened in the match. And had a high ball going in there. He's under pressure on the high ball as such. It'd be interesting to see here now what John Kelly's going to do, Joe. Will he go for a goal or will he tap it over? If, if it was a ball, we think, you'd be bet your bottom dollar that Eugene Toon would go for the goal. There was a worry going into the match that Greg Kennedy might concede freeze. It's been Michael Healy who's been conceding the freeze, and Declan Ryan is causing a lot of problems. There he is again, almost impossible to dispossess. So the free from 20 metres out. Running repairs being done there by Eugene O'Neill. Eugene probably would be happier playing at full forward, but when you got Declan Ryan in there, well, forget it. And it's tapped over the bar by Owen Kelly. Five points so far. And we haven't even reached 30 minutes into the game. 1-9, one, 1-3. One, Galway will be worried. But it's still an open game. Lots of opportunities. Fribbins down towards Mark Kearns. He's not really getting the measure so far of David Kennedy. Here comes David Tierney. This is Mark Kearns. Broderick nipping inside. Such a dangerous player. And that's over. Good play indeed here by Kevin Broderick. 1-9 to 1-4. Yeah, it is a great ball. Again, he's on a little weave and run on his left side. He can left to right, and he's gone. He's popped over to the far wing. He's going very deep for ball. And you might have taken a step or two too many just from watching that again in reprise. That is uh, Richie Murray. Pressure on Eamon Corcoran this time. And the referee says, ball picked off the ground. It's going to be a free down for Galway. Hot evening, intense evening. Yeah, Lots to enthuse about. Sun is coming out, like it's quite warm down there at times. Eamon Corcoran from J.K. Brackens. Just out the road from Thurles, as they say. It's Temple Moore. Cahill Moore. Lobbing this one dangerously in. Everybody off a great stroke there, and it is Fergal Healy who's put it over the bar. Wonderful response to the ball coming in. It was instinctive, really, by Healy, and he's narrowed the gap to four points. Yeah, it's his first score. Beautiful score, one handed flick. You don't see much of that now, but the goal forwards are showing Joe that with a little bit of ball, they're capable of scoring. That was a lovely touch. It has the wrist. Here come Galway once again. Richie Murray soloing away from Lark Horvath. Belted in here. Rabbits after it. So to Brendan Cummins. Good holding by Cummins. That wasn't easy. Out towards Eamon Corcoran. A short play. Delivering the ball in towards the forward. Not the best of passes. Ollie Canning put under pressure here. Owen oh, Kelly after him. Canning gets it away towards Kevin Broderick. Last touch seemed to be there by Eamon Corcoran. And a switch there in the Galway team in the last couple of moments. Joe Rabbit has gone to full forward and Eugene Clunan has gone across to the corner. Yeah, Joe, that'll be for them high balls when he has a feel the, 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 if you can catch a high one at all, you can get a penalty in the 21 that Clunan could stick it. So it's Clunan, Rabbit and Healy right now in the inside forward line for Galway. The ball is in towards the miss by Philip Marr. Paul Orman scooping it away to himself, at least attempting to do so. Not able to contain it. Sideline ball. Still only four points in it. At the moment, there's a lot of pressure on tape. They're, they're holding it out, but they're putting a lot of ball over the line. The pressure is on them. This line ball will be taken by Richie Murray. Giving himself every every opportunity. Broken down by Mark Kearns, scooped away. And as far as Broderick, and Broderick comes in and drives it over. 
point number two for Kevin Broderick for the afternoon so far. Lots of maroon and white all around Croke Park. Huge crowd, great atmosphere. And this is where it came back out towards Kevin Broderick. And he's such a sharp forward. Yeah, he's lightning fast and he's picking up all the embrace because he's leaving his own wing left and he's going right across and picking any break up and very dangerous on it. Cummins belting it straight down through the middle. David Tierney this time. That's a wonderful catch. Right back, putting pressure on the goal of the uh, Tipperary full back line. And Eugene Clunan leading the charge, looking for the score. Acute angle. Too acute. He's put it wide. There'll be one minute of added time at the end of 35. It's flown by this first half. Lots of great scores. Nicky pacing up and down the sideline. They rise up for it again and it comes back down to Tommy Dunn. Dunn leading for Tipperary inside towards Declan Ryan. Out in the corner, he's claiming that uh, one of the Galway players got a touch to it. Pat O'Connor is having none of it. Declan still protesting furiously. No lane is back there as well. Insisting on having his say. Incidentally, Declan Ryan's an accomplished horseman and plays golf off a handicap of 10. So he's an all-round sportsman. Richie Murray, raiding, fouled, free in. Chance for Galway. It's an important free now coming up towards the half-time break. It'll be just two points between the teams. Yeah, that feel Joe, even if it was a foul there, he was lucky because he definitely carried nine or ten yards without doing anything and just running with it. Let's watch this again here. Well, that was where Paul Oman came in on the uh, tip midfielder. Still attention required. Always doctor is Dr. Brendan Day. John Lahey, he'd love to be playing. He'd play anywhere. He'd play in goal. Brian Amara was just ahead of him there. It's Richie Murray who's getting the attention. Yeah, Jerry, I think at the moment that uh, the two wing backs and Tate Bayman, Cochran, Paul Kelly will probably switch. Paul Kelly will probably come over and try to uh, take tags on Broadley. That may well happen. Shara Morris has been out attending as well to the injured player. She's the Galway physio. Job done. Now it's up to Eugene Clunan. A goal and two points so far. Goldwyn will feel a lot better going into the break if he can put this over. Rarely misses. So a goal and three. Goldwyn have had 20 scoring chances. That the latest. Tipperary 13. But Tipperary still lead this match. 68,512 the attendance here this afternoon for this final. Derek Hardyman. That is Alan Kern's way back there. Everybody appealing for it. Well, it's going to go Galway's way. So just another few seconds to play at the end of this first half. Galway. Lots of opportunities, quite a few misses. Tipperary, less wasteful. Paul Kelly was trying to get that ball away, didn't make a great fist of it. Joe Rabbit inside in the thick of the action, and the referee is probably going to throw the ball in. So last few seconds of this first half. Mark Curran's trying to get it away there for Galway. Paul Orman's about. A little uncertain. Comes out in the end, however, to Richie Murray, and Murray has fired it wide. And that is eight wides now. In fact, eight has become nine. Even worse.
Final whistle of the first half. Tipperary shading it. Not as many scoring opportunities. But Mark O'Leary took his goal in style after 22 minutes, having been set up by Declan Ryan. But just two minutes later, Eugene Clunan was on hand to get the latest goal in his championship career to keep Galway nicely in touch in this 2001 Guinness All-Ireland Hurling Final where it's Tipperary 1-9, Galway 1-7. Let's go down now to the sideline. Our reporter today is Dara Maloney. John Lai of Tipperary, what's your view of the way Tip have played in the first half? Well, I, don't, I think we're struggling a bit, you know, Galway seemed to come into the last 15 minutes and, you know, and we were very fortunate to be in front. You know, it's going to be a hard, a hard second half where our lads will have to dig, dig deep and Galway have whatever breeze is there, you know, so, you know, we're happy, we're happy to be in front. Do uh, you think you should have made more of it when you were on top? Well, I think so, you know, like it's been in the second half, but I suppose from a, a Galway point of view early on, they missed a few chances, you know, and, you know, we're very fortunate, as I said, to be in front, but, you know, hopefully in the second half, like, that we can open it up in the half forward line in midfield and start taking our scores. All right, John, thank you very much. Cheers. Well, that's the great John Lahey, injured, of course, in the Munster Championship, and let's hope he's back soon. There are just two points between the teams in the All-Ireland Final at Grove Park. It's 1-9, 1-7. It's a good game. Let's hope you'll enjoy it with us in the second half. I choose to believe the glass is half full and that life is to be enjoyed, not endured. So I choose essential, the passionate and the delightful. Choose happiness, I choose to say yes. Choose Capri. Control your passion. Supermax. Tempting food. Win Champions League tickets. Win All-Ireland tickets. Win International Rugby tickets. Win Formula One tickets. Win International Soccer tickets. It's the biggest sports giveaway ever. Every morning, the Stars got another chance for you to win the Honda Sporting tickets. Get your copy and get ready to win. Tomorrow morning, only in the Star. That youth from Tiernan Oak now at full back and defending has never been better. High ball George is full forward. It will surely have stolen. He has now reached the left corner. What a brilliant game this player has had. Lord of the day reaches midfield, running like an Olympic sprinter. He dives, he's blocked it. A super save. This man is certainly reaching for the stars. Across Ireland, we move over 200,000 people over 180,000 kilometers. And yet, in over 80 million journeys every year, we still begin each one as if it was our first. So, from start to finish, you're better off on Bus Aaron. Joe Connolly in there. Leonard Enright still in there. Out to this side of the field now. It's 24. Four going through. And it's game a goal. A 
goal for Galway. Two minutes gone, Bernie Ford, the kicker of that one. Bernie Ford of that famous All Ireland victory for Galway in 1980. They'll be hoping for a repeat of something similar today. This is our email address, gea at rte.ie, and also you can visit our website, www.rte.ie forward slash gaa. Well, here at Croke Park in the sunshine that is half time, the crowd are getting a little bit of a chance to join in the fun. The two big slithers you can see way off in the distance there are to be thrown back and over into the crowd by their minders. And the crowd are in, uh, involving themselves in the fun as well and throwing them back out again for the moment anyway. I hope somebody hasn't got a cigarette down there. A look at the statistics then from the first half of Galway versus Tipperary in this year's All-Ireland Final. Tip winning it by 1-9 to 7 points at half time. They've had five fry, uh, frees each. Galway have hit nine wides against Tipperary's three. They may regret some of those uh, by the end of the match. Uh, 165 during the game and in a very, very sporting contest but a good, a bright one for all of that. No yellow cards and no red cards of course during the first half. Pete Flirty and Mighty Dagen are here on the panel with me. Pete, it's, it's a good game of hurling and Tip just shading it at the moment. It is a great game of hurling. It's very open. I didn't expect that it would. I thought that it closed down the major players in, in the game early on. But it is open. It's fast. Um, Tipperary started the better. Their half-back line is completely on top. Um, Lara Corbett is creating a lot of trouble out at the half-forward line for Galway as Owen Kelly is as well. Um, but Galway came back into it and once they got the goal they seemed to settle them completely. Um, Kevin Broderick is playing a big part today. He's scoring and he's also coming out to midfield and helping out. But for the last 15 minutes Galway seems to be just getting a little bit of edge and getting settled into the game. Mighty Dragon and Galway needed that goal because Tip had got one just before that that had stretched them into a nice lead. That's right, yeah. Um, so you now Brendan Cummins with a big free and it, it's, it's a typical Declan Declan Wine. Did so well here. Declan waited behind. Gets the ball, gives it straight away, and a brilliant finish from Mark O'Leary. It shows Declan Ryan why he's on the Tipperary team. People are doubting, you know, whether he should be there or not. But Declan has a great brain. The minute he got the ball, fed it on, and a brilliant finish. See there, Declan actually, in the in the match itself, you could see the way he moved behind the full back and made space for himself. Great score. Yeah. Then Pete Finnerty came to goal. They goal. Eugene Clunan got onto the end. Good save by Brendan Cummins, but Clunan there to finish it off. Yeah, it looked as if Tipper were going to steal a march on Galway and they're going six points ahead of one stage. And here we see Fergal Healy lays off the ball to Alan Cairns. A good shot, great save by, by Brendan Cummins again. But there we have Clunan on the edge of the box, on the box. Like early good full forward, simple shot, low to the ground. Cummins couldn't do anything about it, the second one. That goal really brought Galway back into it. But Tipperary quickly went into a six-point lead again. Yes. Uh, and it was then we saw the worth of Broderick. Um, a uh, rabbit is playing extremely well. He's holding the ball in the forward line. Galway have had seven points and uh, nine wides and a goal. Yeah. So they're creating a lot of chances. Tipperary had only three wides and they scored one night. So Galway have created more chances against the Breeze than Tipperary have with the Breeze. So I wouldn't be too worried sure. being two points down. But in fairness, Tip are making Galway work for their scores. Unlike some of the scores that Tip have got, Michael Jack now, Tomas Dunn has picked off a few lovely points. I mean, yeah. it's a simple game when you do it like this. It is, yeah. Well, Tomas Dunn's a great player and here, Lark Harbert, who Pete mentioned is playing well, took a heavy knock, gave it to Tomas. Little flick of the wrist, like beautiful strike and over the bar. Um, Tipperary have been taking their chances better. I think that's a, that's a sign of Tipperary all year. It's something they've been doing against Limerick in, um, against Limerick in yes. the Munster final. It's very same thing. Five or six balls downfield all over the bar. They're very economical and they're making Galway work very hard and they're not giving away that many frees. Eugene Clune has scored two points maybe from frees. And that's, you know, they know they'll give away frees, Clunan will score them. So they're playing very well. But Galway were well on top the last 10 minutes, got the last four scores of the first half. And, you know, they'll be very happy at half-time to win behind them in the second half. They will indeed, gentlemen. Thank you very much for that. Just two points in it then at half-time. Certainly, as the great sporting cliche says, all to play for in the second half. Well, the All-Ireland title to play for, that's for sure. I've seen football all over the world, but I don't understand it here. I don't understand your formations. Your half-time brew. What's the point of the team before? This is the same. I always stand in. Football is different here.
twice a week, the National Lottery gives you the chance to become a millionaire and join a growing team of lotto players from all over Ireland who've already won a million pounds or more. No, Get it, lads. The Irish are the blacks of Europe, and Dubliners are the blacks of Ireland, and the Northside Dubliners are the blacks of Dublin. So say it once, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Island Ferries, with several sailings a day to all three Aran Islands. The largest ferry operator to the Aran Islands, Island Ferries, Victoria Place, Galway. Here's more, better value this week only from Dunn Stores. Irish mushrooms now just 88 pence a pound. St. Bernard chicken curry only 99 pence. St. Bernard back rashers get 20% extra free, only 3.99. And St. Bernard kitchen towels, three for the price of two. That's more, better value only from Dunn Stores. If I could save time in a bottle First thing that I'd like to do Is to save every day Till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you Tom Tom, I'm married Oh, right You do still have my car though, don't you? I've looked around and ought to know You're the one I want to go of mind at the right price. Paul McKillen. Aidan Ryan. They shared in their monster triumphs. On to Nicky English. Oh, it's a bullet! It's a superb goal! Nicky English's defining goal of the 1989 All-Ireland Final for Tip. Nicky English today, manager of the Tip side, hoping to win this All-Ireland. Galway are back on the field, ready for the second half action. No Lane will have made the final preparations at half time for 35 minutes of hurling. That's going to win the All-Ireland for one side or the other at this stage. And Greg Kennedy's played a good game so far uh, in the Galway defence. Nervous 35 minutes ahead now, Pete Finnerty. Yeah, it's all. This is this is what it comes down to now. Um, myself and Michael were just talking there. It's whoever will get the break. The break will come somewhere that will turn this game. And whoever is going into the last six minutes playing the stronger is a team that's going to run out, run out the winners in the end. Uh, an early score or two could decide it, uh, or it could be a late goal. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the moment. Tip. Then heading back onto the pitch, let's go back again to our commentary team of Cyril Farrell and of course Joe Canning. Yeah, we're looking forward to this uh, second half. When Galway beat Tipperary here at the quarter-final stage last year, it was the county's first championship win in Croke Park since 1993. Long, long time. It's going to be Galway who will have the wind behind them, but the sun in the eyes of their backs. Two between them at half-time. And Pat O'Connor to get the second half underway. Straight away, it's La Corbett here. Hitting it on the run, but uh, hitting it inaccurately. And it's the first wide of the second half. He's been more expressive, I think, today out there at half forward. Of course, he has done that at uh, Thurla Sarsfield, as we know. And what about Clunan inside? What uh, kind of a response will he get from the others to deliver the passes for him to possibly win the match? Yeah, John, at this stage, right, Paul Kelly has switched wings, he's now on Kevin Broderick. Well, that was expected, I'm sure. 
Richie Murray can't get a decent strike on it. It's John Carroll instead. Running into a cold sack was Liam Hodgins, held. So it's going to be a free. A certain it. amount of overholding of the match today. A little bit cooler will come to this joke because he'll feel that he can score all these with a breeze behind him. So Eugene Cloonan called out from full forward. But they have plenty of strong men inside. A goal and three points so far. High up into the air. Breeze behind him, but it's carried it to the right. And he's put it wide. So that's a wide apiece. The opening two attacks of the second half. Buckout taken very quickly. Here comes Lark Orbit again, getting away from Derek Hardyman. Still soloing forward into space. Touched there by Cahill Moore. Pressure on the Galway backs. Corbett was in quickly after it. Hardyman getting it away for Galway. Out as far as Eddie Enright. Picked up here by Alan Kearns. Batted down there by Paul Kelly. Broderick's after it. Running into Tomas Costello. The referee says there's a foul. It's picked off the ground. And that is about the third time this has happened in the match. Jerry's sure tipped when you get down that here, but Larry Corbett is constantly trying to go over the things. He's just not that physically strong enough yet to go right through and do real damage. But Kevin Broderick is, you know, very lively down the far side. This game is on a knife edge. Whoever gets the first point or two here could win it. That's what happened there. Brendan Cummins. It's a huge one. Dropping right in there. Pressure. Greg Kennedy trying to cope with that pressure. They come forward again. A goal opportunity, and it's for O'Leary, who's got a second goal. Just two and a half minutes into the second half, and it's a goal by Mark O'Leary. It's more like a football rush uh, in, in rugby, like all along the ground, the whole way. The best didn't get scripted. Here, the thought that it here, the Tata had a clear, but spreads it along here and just keeps tipping it away. Can't get it. Premise doesn't get a touch, sure. he, he'll feel disgusted. What a day it's turning out for Mark O'Leary. That's two opportunities of a goal, of a score of any kind, in fact, and they both turn out to be goals. Goals, they say, win matches. And this is how the Galway defence failed to cope with the pressure of O'Leary and his colleagues coming in on Michael Crimmins, and he dispatches it. Yeah, the Galway defence, Mike Adair, will not be happy there because that ball wasn't even clipped as such. It should have been gone to the side at least. The management will be very unhappy. Here it was again. Hadn't such a reputation coming into it, this for getting goals, more of a point scorer. He'll be hoping it's his day. So the dock, Brendan Day and Sharon Morin are required once again. Well, this is a very bright and intelligent young player, Mark O'Leary. Plays for the Kilruan McDonough's club. Now it's asking serious questions of Galway. They might have been happy enough at half-time. They have time still as Joe Rabbit goes through or tries to do so. Taken down by Paul Ormond. Galway want to get on with it fast now. No time to hang about. Five points between the teams well that's where Rabbit was dragged down so now there's a score chance at the other end this was once again Mark O'Leary's goal they'll be looking at that video for a long time but at the other end following the foul on Joe Rabbit it's a free about 25 metres out and Eugene Cloonan will take it is it too early to go for a goal sir? no he blasts this over the bar you're dead right 1-4 now for Eugene Cloonan, out of a tally of 1-8. They need a better spread of scores, really. Kevin Broderick's got two, Rabbit's got one, Fergal Healy's got one. They need more. Pressure on. Here they come again, John Carroll going through here for Tipperary. Declan Ryan making himself available, Oli Canning for Galway going back. The ball squirts away out of his hand. He wasn't quite sure where he was going to end up. It ends up out over the end line. It's a 65. A second for Tipperary. 
At the moment, sure, like the physical strength of Declan Ryan and John Carroll in the middle, they're using them, kind of walking through with their strength more than anything else. Well, a bit news, Dolly Canning waiting now inside with his colleagues. Tommy Don has pointed a 65 already in this final. Dark Corbett thought about going in after this one, but he's come out instead to mark a opponent as Tommy Dunn puts it over the bar. And in the Guinness All Ireland Hurling final, he's now got four points. Four shots at the target, four points in all for Dunn, 2 8, 2 uh, 10 rather, 2 1 8. Michael Crimmins down the centre, he comes once again, getting out to meet it was Eddie Enright. Here's Dunn once more, spooning it ahead into Declan Ryan, holds on to it well, good turn, great strike, he puts it over the bar as one of the umpires falls down in his eagerness to get back and get a really good view of it. Declan Ryan doesn't care, he's now contributed points and goals, he's scored one here as well, he's a great player. Yeah, Joe, there's the poor old umpire, falling down on the left-hand side. That came again from Tommy Dunn, he's just laying off, beautiful ball, Go, we need to get back into this game, for any chance in this final. Next few minutes, crucial again towards Enright familiar style Greg Kennedy under pressure there Declan Ryan playing it outside might still come good for them Eugene O'Neill hasn't scored in the game back to Declan Ryan scorer of that last wonderful point getting away from Michael Healy hitting it but hitting it wide this time he gives the side great leadership and great authority in the attack there's quite a few young players in that Tipperary forward line. Here's Alan Kearns hoping to make history. But the first part of that will be to win here today. Back to Mark Kearns, his brother, throwing it back there legally to Eugene Clunan. And you know that every time he gets the ball, there are two or three players coming on to him. Brendan Cummins trying to come on to this one. Helped out here by Paul Ormond. Dangerous situation. Virgil Healy trying to turn inside here. Galway trying to create the opening, Kevin Broderick, one of the ball played out to him, David Kennedy's after him, it's Broderick striking it and Broderick has put it over the bar, that's one back, three points for Broderick. Yeah, Joe, he's playing very, very well, any chance he gets he's sticking it over, it's a ball that, that Chippen Fielder should have cleared, the goal, the goal for us persisted and worked very hard. You saw the number of backs who were there, and it came out to Kevin Broderick, got away from David Kennedy, and got his latest score. Declan Ryan capable of causing and creating consternation Richie Murray easy one here taken well by Paul Kelly not getting away however as he would wish David Tierney long ball in there Philip Marr touching it back out beyond Fergal Healy this time quick readjustment of his positioning Healy batting it and Healy putting it off the woodwork comes back down to Paul Ormond threatening moment there for the Tipperary backs out as far as Emin Corcoran up towards John Carroll broken away from him by Liam Hodgins here's David Kennedy the other number six Kennedy can't take it up instead it's Galway who take up the challenge once more going all the way through here Hodgins feeding it outside to Fergal Healy Joe Rabbit in front of goal dangerous moments here for Tipperary there's a push and it's going to be a free down for Tipperary and a chance for their backline to take a breather. They'll need it. Yeah, Jared, both sets of backs have been stretched because both balls look very, very dangerous when they get it. And it's a fantastic game. It's a very lively contest. That was Fergal Healy there. Rabbit was coming in next. And that was uh, Philip Marr going down. Eugene O'Neill trying to take it up here. Owen Kelly is there as well. That's Derek Hardiman. Paul Kelly out over the sideline. Line ball going to be to Galway. Tipperary with a nice little lead at this stage. Galway having created so many chances in the first half. Yeah, Joe, but the game is still in the balance. Like Galway will be trying to come and come and score. And if Chip can survive these eight to ten minutes, it'll be a long way towards All Ireland. Galway hoping for a period of dominance and consistency. Out it comes to Paul Kelly once again. Needing help. Corcoran is there to provide it. 
that's won by Hodgins, back in there once again to Richie Murray, can they get a score here, he's put it wide, that's now a total of 11 wides for Galway, it illustrates their dominance for periods of the game, but then they've given away crucial scores, at least those two goals, and now Corbett with this latest effort, and he's put it over, it's a first point for Lark Corbett in this match. Thrilled Tipperary supporters. Michael Crimmins, the Galway goalkeeper, was out protesting that it was wide. The umpires had other ideas. Fergal Healy trying to take it up onto the stick. There's Mark Kearns looking at the target, turning well. They needed it. He's provided it. It's his first point. Olvar Alan Kearns have now scored for the Galway forward line. And the only one not to score on the forward line of Tipperary so far has been Eugene O'Neill's top of the left. Derek Hardiman. David Tierney. Run back by Lark Robert. Very plucky performance. Trying to deliver on the big occasion and succeeding. A second point for the Thurlis Sarsfields young star. Six points for margin. Early stages of the second half, about 12 minutes gone. Great score. Well, you can see that Tipperary really are fired up for this. Both sides are, but Tip are delivering a better quality so far. Yeah, Joe, you'll have to you'll find that uh, that ball will have to be on Brian Higgins or something to try to inspire them. They are the six points down now. They are driving forward, but they just need some little spark, extra spark, and they can't wait too much longer. Brian Higgins is about to come on the Galway team. He came on when Greg Kennedy was sent off in the semi-final. I thought he had a stormer, but surprisingly he wasn't started. Yeah, he's coming here now and he's going to pick up Larry Carter. It's going to be Derek Hardiman who will come off, and that, I'm sure, is the job he'll be presented with. Yeah, Jerry, have no, I have no doubt that he'll come on. He'll try to pick up Larry Carver and put the shackles on him. He's a very good little touch as well. Both of them, Seth and Carver, are the same lively players, good, wristy, wristy players. Richie Murray about to strike this one. Great connection. Dangerous ball. Philip Mark comes out. Towering presence at uh, full back. Loses it. Broderick's in. Impishly. Trying to get it forward. Eugene Clunan trying to keep it in play. Brendan Cummins comes out here and acrobatically takes it down. Very secure goalkeeping. Getting it away out, but only as far as Kevin Broderick. Getting it back towards Mark Kearns. They still have a player over if they need Richie Murray. Kearns going for the score himself. It's one goal where it requires, and he is able to provide it. A second point by Mark Kearns. Yeah, Jaron did it really under pressure as such like an goal we needed at this stage. Great score. Five points between them. Still a lot of time left. Broderick supplying that ball inside to Mark Kearns. Given a bit of latitude there. And he did just enough. Linesman has brought something to the referee's attention. He's gone in to speak to a couple of players. Joe Rabbit is one of them. And I think it's Paul Ormond the other. Ah, yeah, Jared, they're going a bit tussled and pushing in here, but there's nothing serious as such. It's been very noticeable, Jared, that's been Galway do score so far, Tip have been able to hit that. It's important now for Galway's sake that they don't let this ball get through the half-back line. Referee now going across to Eugene Clunan and Philip Marr. Not quite sure if he got the uh, identity of the correct players earlier on. This time he's happy he's got his men. And Eugene Clunan is heading for a yellow card. on his face but uh, maybe he's been throwing his weight around nothing nasty nothing sinister it's been a sporting match a good game let's hope we're in for a great finish Tommy Dunn such a stylist down there towards Kelly challenged by O'Neill kicked on here towards Declan Ryan another goal chance it's wide it was a great chance. It's one that he'll dream about if Tip don't win this final because the ball came in, you'll see it here in the replay now, and came in from just kicked into him on the ground and he was completely on his own. That could nearly have finished the Galway challenge, I think. He went for it, but top look and tip he just missed it. Crim is a bit delighted. Well, I think he had to go for it. It was such a good chance. He's missed it, however. Galway are still in it. Rabbit take, again takes too many steps. 
So far, Joe, the Tipperary defence have been very disciplined. They're not, they're, they're staying inside, tackling hard, but they're not really fouling as such. And, you know, the likes of Rabbitties could become frustrated if they're not careful. Here it is again. That won't be replayed in the Ryan household too often, that particular incident. But he's a team player. He'll want to see this side get through to take the Liam McCarthy Cup. John Carroll, up into the clouds he comes. Breaking down here towards Eugene O'Neill. He'd love to score. Outside to Declan Ryan. Hoping to turn in perhaps and give himself a decent scoring opportunity. Good work by Michael Crimmins. That is brilliant goalkeeping. There were forwards coming in on top of him. He kept his eye on it. He was very decisive and courageous. Oh, what a great catch. Brilliant work. That is Eamon Corcoran having a great game at wing back inside towards Eddie Enright. Spills away from him, however. Cottle Moore back into the forwards towards Fergal Healy. Agent Clunan's there as well with Philip Marr. It favours Fergal Healy taking on Ormond. Great block by Ormond. Comes back towards Healy. Ormond once again trying to work for it. Healy's in there as well, determined and courageous. And the referee's going to throw it in. It's a very spirited contest. Everybody giving their all. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very well contested, but very, very clean for an all Ireland final. Like, you know, they're hitting hard, but very, very fair, very sporting. Whoever loses will be devastated, but at the same time, everybody can feel very privileged and proud to have played in a final and done their best. Premier this did, was a great piece of goalkeeping. Did very well there, Jericho. He's kept his eye on it. was two fouls coming in. It definitely kept going in the game. Because Declan Ryan had, had, had rolled the tackle by Kindy, got around him easy, flicked a lovely ball across him. If that went into the net, it would be curtains for Galway. Great save. Boss Costello is the player who was injured. Right, corner back, of course. Moss. Also does Tom emerged from a highly regarded minor team back in 96. Regarded, I know, by the Tipperary mentors as a very fearless and confident player. In 96, Tip beat Galway after a replay that was a minor. So, so many of them have made the progression through to the big stage here. The real pressure game. Tierney trying to drag it on. Pursued by Ormond. Open play, Fergal Healy, good turn. And it comes back off the post again. It's the second time it's happened. Galway out of luck once more. Ormond with the clearance. Eddie Enright anticipating. Chasing after it as well is Richie Murray. The two number nines and Broderick's in the chase as well. Broderick after Enright. The two Galway men knocked down. Enright striking it. This will be a great point if he gets it, but I think he's just put it wide. Sheer guts and determination. Oh, it's end-to-end -end stuff. Crimmins making a great save at one stage, and at the other end, the ball striking the post, and it was Fergal Healy who hit this one and was really out of luck. Yeah, John, even though Tipper are the five pints up, this game is still in a knife edge. Uh, Tomas Costello is going to make way for Donica Fahi. Fahi is a cornerback has had lots of experience playing in the league, some championship experience as well. So his big moment has arrived and he's in there to mark Fergal Healy. There's a blood injury here to John Carroll. It'll be a puck out to Galway when we get our breaths back. There are nearly 20 minutes gone in the second half. John Carroll is back in the action again. Ooh. Spills away from Paul Kelly. Battles with Mark Kearns. Knocked away by Enright. One back here well. Liam Hodgins. Galway centre half back. Hoping to lead them to this winning of the title. The referee saw a push and a foul. It's a free out. And the bar gives it the thumbs up. Tip backs are playing very well, Jared. They're controlled so far and they're just hanging on the edges. They get out in front and maybe a lucky free out, maybe it could have gone in, but like the thing is they're trying to get to the ball in front and playing the ball. Very, very controlled. Ma was man of the match, of course, of the Monster Championship win over Clare. Key day that particular afternoon. 
Hodgins has it again. He does an awful lot of really good work, Liam Hodgins. Used to play in the corner, of course, for Galway. But he's become a very accomplished and confident centre-half back. Yeah, during the last five minutes, he's begun to really dominate. John Carroll has kind of got out of the game for a while, anyway. 2-13, 1-11. Five points between them. Tipperary still leading. Hodgins whipping it in. Kearns in after it. That's a couple of the Kearns brothers. So, too, Joe Rabbit. Tip, their backs have been excellent. But they've conceded a sideline ball. Tommy Dunn back with the action once again. The question is, Jerk, can these backs still contain this pressure? This terrible pressure on Tip at the moment, even though they're on top, a lot of pressure down there, but so far they're dealing with it well. Instructions being called out. No better man than Brendan Commons. Towering figure in that uh, Tipperary goal. Paul Ormond I've seen down injured. Tierney preparing to take the sideline ball. Don't know what happened. Referees had a word with a couple of players pointing the finger. No booking. They've had just one in the match so far. Tierney coming to strike this. Good cut. Dangerous ball. It's gone wide. Just needed a little nick from a Galway stick. They're nervous, they're tense, they're anxious. They're drawing as well now. Declan Ryan has gone out centre forward. Definitely John Carroll's gone out for a while and Declan has gone centre. Probably for five or seven minutes at the most. Here he is, he's coming for this ball against Liam Hodgins. And it's Brian Higgins, the substitute, who picks it up. Chased after by two Galway players. A tangle of legs and the referee says a free to Galway. No lane. Can he produce something special from his team? in the remaining 13 minutes. Hodgins to take the free. It's a good delivery. Again, the Tipperary defence stands very firm, but it comes out to Broderick, ever the danger man, and he has belted it over the bar. Broderick is on fire, it's his fourth point. But will he finish on a winning team? Four shots taken, four points scored and four points between these teams and still plenty of time to go yeah John they've tried two different men enemies take care of both of them he's after it again Kevin Broderick he's back to his best form this year here he comes once more playing it out towards Mark Kearns hand passed inside Broderick was left loose free nobody on him and he has driven it wide the Galway flags all around us here up in the air cheering what they thought was a score they can't believe it. And at the moment as well, Jared Paul Kelly, I think, is down with cramp. Like, he's, he's trying to follow Broderick tight, he's got down with cramp as such, and Tip will probably have to be on his soul because if he's, if he's cramped that bad and not able to stick with him, he just There's can't even there. There's change coming up, Cyril. It'll be Paddy O'Brien coming in for Eugene O'Neill. But this was that great chance. It was a very good chance. Still four out of uh, a total of five efforts so far to score from is a very good return. That is Paul Kelly in trouble. Well, Paddy O'Brien is in for Eugene O'Neill, but they've also got uh, an injured player, Michael Ryan from Temple Derry. They'll be about to enter the action. Declan Ryan, two goal women are after him. And Ryan has fired it into Hill 16, but he's fired it right of the left hand post. And yeah, at the moment, you're two put down to 14 in. They've yet to get a sub on. They've got a sub on. Paul Kelly is gone. He's had hamstring trouble all through this championship. Mihal Ryan has come in. There he is. Pressure back on the Tipperary backs once more. Fergal Healy trying to advance down that left-hand side. Cutting in well. David Kennedy's after him. Galway needing something special. He's come out of it. He's got to go. It's Fergal Healy. That's a fantastic one, Jerry got in there. At this stage, all the, all the right side of the tip defence are gone off injured. And like, that's a fantastic score. If Tip can weather this, they'll win it. But Galway are in the driving seat at the moment, even though they're a point down. A point down, but ten minutes to play. This was Fergal Healy getting inside the cover and belting it past Brendan Cummins. This puck out is vital, whoever gets this one. It's what Galway have required. He has delivered. Now Mark O'Leary has only delivered two goals, has won a free in. 
only one point in the All Ireland final, 213 to 212. Here it is again. It was a great score. Tip might argue that he took a step or two too many, but referee saw it otherwise. This is Owen Kelly, and Kelly has put it over the bar. Six points now for Owen Kelly, and two between them again. A gripping final. Kennedy rising up there, beaten for it, and here comes Broderick. What a match he is playing. Needing a bit of assistance there. Good dogged resistance from Tommy Dunn. And the referee, or Langsman, I think, deciding that it'll be a, a throw ball. The one and older is how Broderick can keep running. He's running the whole pitch, so it's in, like, and, he's, and he's nearly beaten Tip, and he's all the way he's going on. He's got another nine minutes or thereabouts to uh, win it for Galway, if he can do so. Tipperary looking for eight or nine minutes of sheer resistance from their backs and a couple of more scores. Free to Tipperary. Fresh man in, ready to take it for them. That's Mihal Ryan. Perhaps down towards Paddy O'Brien. Once short instead. Declan Ryan still out there on Liam Hodgins. Centre half back versus centre half forward. Line ball. This one is going to Tipperary. Back on the seats, lads. Plenty of advice. Tense time for Nicky. Grimmins waits. Tommy Dunn firing it in there. Good ball inside. Opportunities. On Kelly trying to get it. So two is O'Brien. Tolly Canning trying to get it on his stick. Does so. Get it out. It's out as far as Cottle Moore. Dispossessed. And once again it is Mark O'Leary. And O'Leary's shot is over the ball. He got his second goal after two and a half minutes of the second half. He's now got two goals a point and a point in this final. And Tipperary have a three-point lead. Everything he has struck has produced a special score. Declan Ryan trying to pressurise Michael Healy. The Castle Gar man is back there for Galway. Nicely taken by Lar Corbett. Inside it goes there. Towards Owen Kelly, top of the right of the stage. David Kennedy lets it run off his stick. Here's Mark Kearns. Galway looking for a rapid response here. And it's inside towards Broderick. There too is your rabbit. Rabbit going forward. Broderick's there also. Here's another chance. Comes off Brendan Cummins. And it stays out. And it's gone wide. It was a genuine goal chance. That could be the one of the winning of the game because there's a goal on there. You know, just a lucky break. Great run by Rabbit. Well, there was a goal on there. There was a goal on for Declan Ryan a little while ago. But credit Brendan Cummins. It spilled away. And uh, Paul Ormond was very happy to see this one head out over the end line. Eamon Corcoran was there as well. And they made sure it didn't cause any trouble. Eddie Enright. Well, it's hit into the corner, but there's nobody there. It's gone wide. Ray McManus getting into the action. One of our most acclaimed photographers in this country. Brendan Cummins, short puck out this time. Michael Griffiths, rather, short puck out this time. Here's Eddie Enright. Whipping it back towards Crimmins, but he has put it wide. It's very tense. Very tense, that ball should be dead shot because it was, was forwards kind of out in front. Just over five minutes, plus whatever stoppage time, still to play in the Skinness All-Ireland Hurling Final. Tommy Dunn providing the fodder inside. They go through with some purpose here. And a really good scoring opportunity is put over the bar there by Paddy O'Brien. The sub has come in, he's got a vital score, and he edges Tipperary ahead. Four between them. It's some contest. Crimmins under pressure. And it was Owen Kelly who just ran out of space. Looks very tired. Will Tip hang on? Can Galway come back? Crimmins. Sending this huge one up the field towards Joe Rabbit. 
But again, the puck out is won by Tipperary and David Kennedy in particular. Across here towards Paddy O'Brien. Dancing feet. Good movement. Excellent control. But the final pass, not a great one. It uses up a few seconds, but it gives possession back to Galway. Can they win it here? They try to take it forward. Once again, it's that man. Broderick striking and Broderick putting it over the bar. Five points for Kevin Broderick. And it's 2.16 to 2.13. He's having some game, Joe. Every ball he gets onto, he's like a little rabbit. He's had to scurry through them and rifle it over the bar, no matter who he's on. Well, the other rabbit has got one point so far. He's got five. Oli Fahi is about to come in for Galway. David Kennedy has an injury. Joe Rabbit about to make way, so it'll be Oli Fahi from Gort in South County Galway, who will be in the match in just a moment. They want to make the changes quickly. John Connolly, one of the greats of Galway hurling. The selectors now trying to make those vital changes that might swing the game one way or the other, in particular their way. So there goes Joe Rabbit. Joe from Athen Rye. Mark Kearns has gone into full forward now at this stage in a switch. And Eugene Clunan has come out to right half forward. Now it's a question of getting the ball. Possession vital. Carroll rising up for this one. It's won again by Galway. Excellent play by Liam Hodgins. Trying to get it away, where he's going to be hooked. Here's Eugene Clunan away from John Carroll. Batted into space, Broderick is onto it. Is there another score here? And the referee has seen a foul. Uh, the ball has gone over the net. It doesn't count. The referee had blown his whistle beforehand, but he is so dangerous. It's going to be a free out. This is what happened here once again. And the referee following the foul has decided to advance the ball 13 metres. A free for Tommy Dunn. Two minutes to go. Haven't seen just yet what the fourth official is set to add on. They're showing it to the crowd. It's four minutes. There's a lot of anxiety still about and will be for another five and a half minutes. Still anyone's game, Joe, still in the Melton pot. The game is there to be won still. This is towards Clunan, being marked there by Eamon Corcoran, picked up by Brian Higgins. Excellent play, but the referee has given the free against him. The Galway fans don't like it. Tipperary anxious to bring in Conor Gleeson. I would think, Joe, that there's a fast puck out. He wasn't just ready for the puck out. There's something coming on. The ref wanted the ball pucked again. Well, it's being pucked again. Crimmins pucking it back out into the action. Pressure on once again on the Tipperary backs, but they've been superb. Eamon Corcoran getting a huge clearance down towards Declan Ryan. Falls down with the fullback. And it's dropped around the place and could go anywhere. It'll go for a 65. A combination of Ollie Canning there and also Greg Kennedy about this could have been another Tipperary goal here no foul there, it was just a clash between the two players but left behind by the goalkeeper they were trying to kick it in but they managed to get it out that is goal with it Got a less jerk on the moment cramps they're all supposed to be very fit and they are very fit we'll just show you like the effort that these guys have put in that's Mark Kearns is down So we're now played 70 minutes. There are four minutes to go. There are three between them. Who's going to win it? That's what happened, Mark Kearns, a little while back. Tommy Dunn will have this 65. He's got two so far. That's two 65s converted. His tally for the day, four points. He has put this one over the bar. It's a vital puck. It keeps the pressure on Galway. 
tremendous accuracy from that range. Galway coming again, needing a score urgently. David Tierney getting in on David Kennedy this time. Once again, they try to uh, profit. Player coming in was Ali Fahi. Here's Kevin Broderick. Lobbing it in towards Fergal Healy. Healy making the catch, the shot. And that is over the bar. That is now a goal and two points for Fergal Healy and only a goal between the teams. But every time Galway come back, it seems Tip can go down the field and get another score. That's what's happened so far out of the job, but this game is still in the Milton Park. John Carroll is under this one. So too is Hodgins. Carroll gets it a vital little flick onto it. Liam Hodgins going across here, covering a lot of space. Taking on responsibility, getting Tierney into the action. David Tierney with the bright white helmet. Philip Marr coming out, doing just enough, keeping it away. Pressure back on Galway. Ollie Canning taking it brilliantly. Two minutes left. Up once again towards Ali Fahi. Runs out to Mark Kearns. Scooped out towards Broderick. They know they need to go. In towards Fergal Healy, but it bounces back out again to Eddie Enright. And Enright drives it away downfield. Michael Healy and Liam Hodges go for the same ball. Inside to Declan Ryan. He's got support. Carroll looking for another goal. It bounces off the defender, Greg Kennedy. Back to Carroll, and it's over the bar. Some great action in this match. Oh, the referee has blown his whistle. They groan, they wonder, what was that all about? The referee had blown his whistle. It's going to be a free in instead. Point does not count there. Referee blew his whistle. It wasn't heard, wasn't noticed. But it's, over, it's uh, going to be a free anyway from the 20-metre line. So it's as good as a point. Kelly yeah. will take this. He's five points from five frees so far. This was Carroll fouled. It's over the bar. And that's another one for Owen Kelly, who makes it 2.18 to 2.14 to Pereira. With a vital edge at a vital stage in the afternoon. Out to Eddie Enright. He's back just around his half-back line. Belting balls away time and again. Greg Kennedy lashing it back. Our goal were to lose yet another All-Ireland final. They have a sideline ball. This will be taken here by Alan Kearns. Clunan inside there. The four minutes almost up. Tipperary now just hoping to stand firm. It's going to be a free in. Galway created 36 scoring chances in this final so far. Tipperary 34. Cummins barking out the instructions. Clunan would surely have to go for a goal here. Everybody's back. He's trying to lob it over the cornerback, but uh, he has put the ball for a 65 instead of one of the backs. One more chance for Galway, but they need two scores. It's a point, sure, he's given a point. He's, he's given a point, point, has he? Yeah. It's uh, now over four minutes gone. Three points between them, so... And up to Pat O'Connor to determine how much time is left. There's still a few more seconds. Galway need to win this ball. Greg Kennedy comes out for it. There's the final whistle. And Tipperary are the Guinness All-Ireland Hurling Champions for 2001. Yeah, and deserved this all, Ger. They were the better team on the day. Started well, took their scores. It was a fantastic game. Great scores on each side. Like, and you know, it had to feel sorry for some of the goals, especially as Kevin Broad had a great game. But overall, tip for the better team. And the likes of Tommy Dunn was captain. But his, it's his big day as such. And great hurling game. Very enjoyable. Very, very fair. Not, not a dirty stroke. It's what you come to see. It was brilliant. It's Nicky's day. And there's the man who got two goals and a point, Mark O'Leary. And this is the sheer pain being experienced now by some of the Galway players it was their big day but it's going to be Tipperary's big night John Lahey what a shame he missed it Brian O'Mara 
What a crying shame that he missed it. But they've played their part along the way. Declan Ryan, the creator, the scorer of a point in this match, the leader of the attack. The fans have enjoyed it, but the Tip fans will go home much the happiest. For the record, the final score shows just three between them. Tipperary, two goals and 18 points. Galway, two goals and 15. And there is a broken-hearted Fergal Healy. It's been a squad effort, a team effort. John Hayes, they're enjoying the moment as well with Nicky English. So let's go down. As they embrace the middle of the field, let's go down to our reporter, Dara Maloney. Tommy Dunn, how does that feel, All-Ireland champions? It's unbelievable, Dara. We're just, I can't feel any at the moment. We're just so happy for the lads, for the supporters and for everybody concerned. It's unbelievable. Quite a finish to it. Twice they came back really strongly at you. Yeah, we knew they're an outstanding team and they came back with goals and put the game back in the melting pot. But we got a couple of points to keep us in front and there was a couple of scares at either end. I'd say it was hard stop at the watch, but we just came out at the right end. It's just unbelievable. And you're going to go and do a very special thing, lift the Liam McCarthy Cup. Yeah, I can't wait. Well done, Tommy. Well done. Thank you. This was some moment of jubilation, <laughs> ecstasy. The moment when Tipperary realised they had won back the Liam McCarthy Cup. As you go into County Tipperary, you see the names of uh, all the great townlands. And the welcome always says, you're in the home of Hurling. That's what they believe. They have won the title now for the 25th time. After three years' work by Nicky English, by also Ken Hogan and Jack Bergen and all the backroom team. Jim Kilty, for instance, looks after their physical preparation. They've all done a magnificent job. And bear in mind that Tipperary led this final all the way through. Galway never got on top, sir. That's true, Gerald. Like, they were always coming from behind. But you'd have to say that on the day, Tipperary were the better team. Like, Galway had some fantastic individuals, and I suppose none better than Kevin Broderick. But overall, the team performance of Tipperary was very, very good. Backs were very controlled, very disciplined, didn't give away any stupid freeze, got out to the ball in front. For midfield, like Tommy Dunn probably had a game of his life, and up front, all the fours are dangerous. Even Young Lark, Cobb, Bow Wing Ford picked his two points. O'Leary got his two goals. John Carroll got a point who broke the Laha ball in. And what can I say about the old man himself? When I say old, he's like vintage wine, Declan Ryan. He was a leader inside their laying off scores, like and two boys in the corners, like he did or did. I suppose Eugene O'Neill will be a little bit disappointed, but that's all forgotten once you've won the title. Let's hear from the winning manager talking with Dara. Nick English, congratulations, a very special moment for you. Yeah, I'm, I refused all the week to let myself believe that they could win, you know, and uh, I, was, I thought we could win it, to be honest with you, and we knew we'd have a mighty battle from Galway, and you know, it's great, like, we, we gave three years, and we made mistakes, you know, as a management team over a couple of years, and kind of went away from the style and went training and running up hills and did all that kind of stuff and ultimately when it comes down to it you need people that are going to put the ball over the bar and this year we decided if we were going to be beaten we were going to be beaten with hurling and um, we started on the 13th of January and we've played 17 games including four challenges against uh, UCC, Boer, um, forget the rest, Watford was one of them and we've had an unbeaten season, it's a perfect season, 17 games 15 wins and two draws and you know like when you know we have i saw the all-stars team being picked last week and who was ahead and Arlets haven't got enough credit you know we've played a very low profile and kept a low profile but this is a great team and very resilient we lost brian amara we lost john latty we lost john o'brien during the year and they've come back and gone through all that and ultimately you know it's i think it's the early 80s since the league and all ireland double has been done and, um, you know, over the next few years, these boys will go down as the perfect season and the perfect team. You know, 17 games undefeated. And we we'll see, I, I'm not sure that Tip will do it again. And we'll see who else will. You know, we, we were, we were delighted. And, it, and it, makes, it makes a great victory out of our league as well now, you know. But the character you showed, because Galway came back very strongly. You were coasting in the first half, great spell in the second half, and they hit you back. Yeah, I think, I, I think the one thing we've, we've never doubted about this team is character. Since the first time I saw them playing in, in Dungarvan. We played in the South East League against Waterford. And we've always looked for guys with character and, you know, we mightn't be the best hurling coaches in the world, but we, we think we're pretty good judges of character and uh, ultimately it came down to that today. So we're delighted. Nick, congratulations. Thanks Enjoy your much, day. Enjoy your day. Tip, tip have won the league and the championship then, but uh, 
it's an awful day for these Galway players trooping off here, getting their runners-up medals. But really, they know they had a chance. They had a, a really good opportunity here today. They created a lot of scoring chances, in particular in the first half. They have the breeze for the second 35 minutes. It turned out to be 39 minutes. Sean McCaig there, handing out these runner-up medals to all of the squad members after their fantastic victory against Kilkenny. The fact of the matter is, Cyril, they needed to put two really big performances back to back. Yeah, but I, I think, sure, if most Galway people have to believe and have to be kind of straight about it, they didn't expect them to beat Kilkenny. And this year, like as Nicky said there, Chip had been the form team. I saw them training for the league semi final. I thought the first touch was unbelievable. And they won every game in the league. You know, last no game is such, when every game is a championship, or even all the tight games. They had the better pedigree coming in. They're three years together as a management team, and that usually doesn't come overnight. Like, uh, Noel and John Connolly, Mike Mack, like, did a fantastic job for the first three, and they'll be there again. And th this team, team deserves every credit. Sean McKay hands over the Lee McCarthy Cup to Tommy Dunn, the jubilant captain of the Premier County. In 2001, they are the Premier County in hurling. It was a great victory for Tipperary. There'll be some celebrations all around Dublin tonight and celebrations in every corner of Tipperary and around the world as well. This is what it's about, all the hard training. They took every match seriously and they won with a lot of style. County Cup on behalf of this outstanding Tipperary panel. It's been a long, <laughs> long journey for us. We thought we'd never, we thought we'd never again lift it, but today makes up for all the bad days. I want to thank a few people. I want to thank our selectors, Jack Bergen, Ken Hogan. And one lad called Nicky English. I want to thank all our backroom staff. John Hoppine Hayes, Pauline Fanning, the great AK, and all the people that contributed to this success. I want to thank our county board, our supporters club, for all down the years, when they're winning nothing, put their hands in their pockets and supported us day in and day out. This is for you, lads. I want to thank our supporters for giving us an unbelievable sport. Thanks very much. And last but not least, I want to thank an outstanding Galway team for a tremendous sporting game of hurling today to put us right to the pin of our colours. I'd like to give them three cheers. Hip, hip! Hip, hip! Hip, hip! For the Margaret. So it very much is Tipperary's day there. And they will do their little lap of honour, show the cup to the adoring fans. Great moment for Tipperary. Let's go down now and hear from uh, the manager of Galway, who is talking with Dara. That's Noel Lane. Noel Lane, a very difficult moment for you. Can you put into words what happened out there today? Well, it was a fantastic game of hurling, I thought. Uh... Four teams tried extremely hard, every ball was contested tooth and nail and uh, Tipperary got the few breaks, you know, they were always that bit ahead of us, the four or five points, we found it very difficult to get back on level terms, even though after our goals we were still a point or two behind, but it was a great game and I'm very proud of the Galway players and uh, I suppose all we can hope for now is we can get back into a final again next year and go one better. Things looked quite good for you at half-time because it, it, wasn't, it didn't seem to be going well for you, but you're only two points back and then the win to come. 
Yeah, I suppose, you know, but the, the wind sometimes can work against you too. And uh, it didn't work for us today, but, you know, Tipperary on the day were probably that bit sharper, that bit better, and uh, we've no complaints. Uh, probably struggled a bit in certain areas, maybe towards the end there, maybe around midfield and that, but, you know, Richie and David and all the lads have just ran themselves into the ground, and I just hope that they can come back and get the reward. He showed a lot of character to come back twice very strongly at Tipperary. They did, yeah. Tip put up it ahead of us all day, and you know we got goals and we came back, but we could never, we could never uh, draw a level or go, or go ahead. And if we did, I felt we could win it. You look down the team sheet, Noel, a very young team. This won't be their last All Ireland final. Not at all. I mean, we'll be back. Very well. No lane there with his views, John Lahey. Fresh and ready to run around there. It's been a great day for Munster Hurling, of course, because Cork won the minor. And a pretty awful day for Galway, having lost both of today's finals. But Tommy Dunn leads them around. And the Tipperary anthem, Schlieve them on, to be, held, be heard here. The combined Artane bands. That's Hill 16. What wonderful colour. Brian O'Mara holding up the cup. Brendan Cummins, one of the great modern day goalkeepers. That's John Lahey, I think, in there. Young and old alike, ready to enjoy it. It's a very emotional day all around, but at the end of it all, the winners are the ones who will feel best about what has happened. And you think that Tipperary went quite a long number of years without winning a Munster title, not to mention an All-Ireland title. Mickey English was a star when they came back in 87 to win Munster, won the All-Ireland in 89, won it again in 91, and they've done it now again 10 years on. A couple of barren years when they had very little success at the Munster Championship. Nicky took up the challenge. They lost, of course, in the 1997 All-Ireland Final when they played Clare here. This was overall a good match, very competitive, a lot of great skill, tremendous commitment. In a way, it's a shame there had to be a loser, but that's what sport's all about. And that's the way it is, Joe. Like, you know, the, the loser, you know, the winner takes all as such. But you have to say, like, it's a fantastic occasion when you have kind of 68 to 70,000 both set supporters sitting down together, enjoying the, the crack together. Okay, they're showing their, 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 their teams and such, but once it's over, they all go shoulder to shoulder and share a pint and a few sandwiches together. That's what makes the GA so strong, Joe. And I think Noel Lane indicated there that he felt really in his heart that they played with an immense amount of skill and pride and there was a platform to build for next year and maybe the year after. That's very true, Gerald. Like, while well, Tipper are a very young team, so are Galway. You have to say that Tipper are longer on the road, they're three years together. This Galway team is only starting really to come and Noel and John and Mike Mack would feel that the hard work is only beginning. Their day will come, have no doubt about that. And I suppose today, after, after losing the day, it will make it all the sweeter when it does come. But today, the, the victory into the proper team because on the day, on this over the 70 minutes toward that bit better on, on the day. So our congratulations uh, to Tipperary, commiserations to Galway, well done to all of the players who took part and the referee. It was a very enjoyable occasion. So let's go back down, get some more comments. So many people have a lot of things to say about today's final and asking the questions, Dara Maloney. Philip, what a moment for you. Yeah, um, I'm kind of breathtaking at the moment. You know, you hear about lads who won all Ireland, they tell you how to win them, they tell you how to train, what to do, and you don't know what the experience is like till actually win one. And we won here now, and it's absolutely great, fantastic. How much in the build-up to the name of Eugene Cloonan figure? You know, Eugene's a top-class player, he's a great full forward, you know. You can never keep him scoreless, or, you know, he's always there, thereabouts. I don't know, just have to keep up beside him, do your best, you know, keep down the fouls because he's lethal on the freeze as well, so hold him as much as you can, but so you're, he's always going to get a goal in a couple of points. It's only a few minutes after. When you look at it now, how would you assess the way you played? Um, we were kind of patchy, you know. The first quarter of an hour, I thought we were very good. We kind of hurled Galway out for small, but Galway were a great team, came back into it. 
Then we heard great first for 10 minutes, maybe the second half. Gowley came back has got another great goal and a few points. But I think we finished very strong. Nicky brought on a few subs there. And it really helped us there to near the end. Great scenes around here. It means so much. Ah, yeah, it means so much for the supporters. You know, they expect a lot of us, and, and we, rightly so, you know. So I'm absolutely delighted for them all. Well done. One of your fellow defenders is here, Thomas Costello. That's a, a fabulous moment for Tipperary. Ah, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable year for me. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's like a dream come true, like. <laughs> I quit the penalty shot of the year. I've got league medal, Muslim medal, Ireland medal in one year. Like, what more can you ask for? One year. Like, Tommy Dunn, Connacht Leeson, Brian O'Mara, Declan Ryan, they've been there seven or eight years. Uh, they, they prayed for this day. I got it in one year. What more can I ask for? Tell me about the occasion. It's a fabulous day. What's it like to play in a match like that? Uh, it's, it's unreal. It took me a while sitting in the first half there. It takes, takes that out of a fella, like, you know. And, um, uh, second half, I got a good old start and twisted my door in the league there and quarter an hour to the game and had to go off. But uh, it's great, it's great. Clearly a very emotional moment for oh, you. It's unreal, unreal. It's great for people to cap away. It's two of us in the panel. What a day. What can I say? Well done. Thank Thanks you very much. Enjoy tonight. Cheers. I'm sure they will enjoy tonight and they'll enjoy the week as well. And I'm sure as well they'll be celebrating until Christmas. Uh, well done to Thomas Costello and his mates. I gather that win was fairly unreal. Uh, a great game of Harling Pete Finner. It didn't work out in Galway's favour, of course, at the end. But this has been a tremendous day for Tipperary and it's been a tremendous year for them because they've done it all the hard way. They've won the Munster Championship. They've won their semi final against Wexford after a replay. And Galway really put it up to them today. They did. It was a fantastic game of Harling and it was nip and tuck all the way throughout the game. The pace was played, it was unbelievable. And Tipperary deserves their victory as much as if Galway won the deserves the victory. Uh, if you were to look at it on a neutral point of view completely, you'd say, well, Tipperary are trying a lot longer than Galway. Some of them have been here, Tommy Dunn, uh, Brendan Cummins have been here before. Players like that have been disappointed when they got beaten by Clare here. They've lost Munster titles. Um, they're entitled to their day in the sunshine too. And Tommy Dunn is his first All-Ireland middle. Declan Ryan, after 13 years of service, collects his third. It's a long time ago yeah. since the Tipperary men had three all Ireland middles. Galway just uh, lacked that bit of leadership today that they had the last day. They were always chasing the game. They were never allowed to dictate the pace of the game. And Tipperary, even though at times they didn't hurl that great, they always hung in there and they've done that all year long so well. At times they mightn't be scored and they might look, they're going nowhere, yes. but they're not conceding scores. And that's what their defence was. They were so tight, there was time and time again the hunted in packs and they closed Galway down. That was the real point about it, Michael Dragnan, wasn't it? I mean, Galway did play well, but Tip made them work and work and work for anything they got out of that game. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that on the balance of play, Galway probably had more possession and um, they couldn't use it. The Tipperary backs are very, very disciplined. Uh, once the ball hits the ground, they're not so good in the air. When the ball hits the ground, they're like the hunting packs and they're all over the place. Um, you know, you have to say to, to Galway, it's very disappointing for them, but there is a lot of young players you would feel particularly sorry for the likes of Kevin Broderick, who had an absolutely fantastic game. Five points from play in the Ireland final and ended up in the lose. And could have got a goal there only for a great save by Brendan Cummins. But he was, he was brilliant. But then on the tip side, like they had stars right throughout the team. All their backs played well at different times. Tommy Dunn outstanding in the middle of the field. And then up front, you know, like I was going to say you know, earlier on, I was saying to Pete, it's always someone that you don't expect is going to do it. And no, I don't think anyone would expect Mark O'Leary to get two goals. He's a great player, scored three or four points maybe, but to come up and score two one in the Ireland final. And there's always someone like that yes. that comes out of the pack and wins the All Ireland for you. And it's tips day. I agree with Pete. I think they deserve it. They're on the road now for the last few years together. A lot of them here for six or seven or eight years were working hard and Nicky took them over, did a great job and brought in say six new backs and built a new built from the back and more experience than uh, Tommy Dunn and Declan Ryan provided the leadership today. That's, you know, that they have been doing all year. So a great win for Tip and well done to them. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts on that for the moment. We have a commercial break coming up shortly. Uh, more, of course, from Croke Park here. Before we go to that break, let's have a look at the statistics from uh, today's All-Ireland hurling final between Galway and Tipperary. Tip winning it by uh, three points, a puck of the ball in the end. 218 to Galway's 215. There were 12 frees for Tip, uh, 10 for Galway, 12 wides for Tip, 14 for Galway, so Tip hit quite a few wides in the second half as it turned out. Uh, they had 365s and just one yellow card during the course of the day. Uh, that was actually shown to Eugene Clunan of Galway. As I said, the commercial break coming up. We're back at Croke Park with more after this. <laughs>